In the realm of Hollywood power duos, few have intrigued as Clint Eastwood and Sandra Locke. Concealed within their enduring bond were mysteries, yet Eastwood is now offering glimpses into their intimate world. Let's delve into these revelations that have stunned fans. At a 1972 gathering organized by a mutual friend, Clint Eastwood encountered Joe Himes on the Universal Studios lot. It was there he encountered and was smitten with actress Sandra Locke. With similar life perspectives, having previously entered into marriages for social and financial motives, Locke had maintained a series of discreet relationships. Their narrative took a significant turn in October 1975 during the filming of the outlaw Josie Wales. In Page, Arizona, when Eastwood and Locke decided to intertwine their lives. Locke later recalled Eastwood's admission during this time, revealing his prior relationship struggles with Maggie Johnson and his candid acknowledgement of never experiencing true love before, coupled with his past infidelities. Moved by his sincerity, Locke found solace in Eastwood's affection, immortalized in his song She Made Me Monogamous. Following the completion of filming, Locke settled in Sherman Oaks, while Eastwood remained in Pebble Beach, their former residence shared with Maggie Johnson. Locke couldn't shake the lingering presence of Johnson in their shared space, mindful of Eastwood's previous marriage. Eastwood had married Maggie Johnson in 1953, after being set up on a blind date in May of that year. Throughout their marriage, Eastwood had extramarital affairs, including one with stuntwoman Roxanne Tunis, resulting in the birth of their daughter Kimber. Eastwood and Johnson divorced in 1984, having had two children, Kyle and Allison, during their union. Despite his infidelities, Johnson reportedly accepted Eastwood's affairs and fathering children outside their marriage. Haunted by the ghost of Eastwood's past with Johnson, Locke expressed her discomfort living in their shared home, prompting them to relocate to Bel Air. There, they purchased a rundown property, embarking on a three-year renovation journey. Throughout the renovation process, the couple divided their time between their residences in Tiburon, California, Sun Valley, Idaho, and the Rising River Ranch, acquired from Bing Crosby's estate. Before delving into Clint Eastwood and Sandra Locke's affair, and the startling disclosures it brought forth, let's trace their paths to stardom. Clint Eastwood, born Clinton Eastwood Jr., on May 31st, 1930, in San Francisco, weathered the Great Depression alongside his parents, Clinton Sr. and Ruth, and his younger sister Jen. Their journey saw them relocating across California before settling in Piedmont. Clint pursued his education in Piedmont and Oakland, Graduating in 1949, post-graduation, he dabbled in various occupations like hay baling, logging, truck driving, and steel furnace work. In 1950, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and served at Fort Ord in Monterey, California, where he imparted swimming lessons. Upon leaving the military in 1953, Clint ventured to Los Angeles, enrolling at Los Angeles, enrolling at Los Angeles City College while juggling a part-time job at a gas station. Despite minimal acting experience, his innate charisma caught the attention of Universal Studios, leading to a contract offer. He embarked on his acting career with minor roles in films like Revenge of the Creature and Francis in the Navy in 1955. The turning point arrived in 1958, when he landed the lead role in the TV western series Rawhide. Meanwhile, Sandra Louise Smith, born on May 28, 1944, to Raymond Smith and Pauline Bain in Huntsville, Alabama, experienced a tumultuous upbringing following her parents' separation before her birth. Her life took a new trajectory when her mother remarried in 1948, adopting the surname Locke. Sandra matured early, shouldering adult responsibilities from her teenage years, including part-time employment, car ownership, and even having her own telephone. Despite her Baptist upbringing, she gradually distanced herself from church attendance as she grew older. In her twenties, she altered the spelling of her name to Sandra to avoid being called Sandy. During her high school years at Shelbyville High School in Tennessee, she excelled academically and socially. After graduation, she secured a job in the promotional department at Upsumes V in Nashville while exploring modeling opportunities for the Tennessee newspaper. Despite her allure... Sandra didn't capture the attention of the popular crowd in school as a potential date. 
Her first romantic involvement, recalled by locals, was with Fred Thomas Jones, a carpenter's son. Around 1963, Sandra severed ties with her family, finding shallow relationships not worth maintaining. She never met her biological father, and upon her mother's passing in 1997 and her stepfather's in 2007, she abstained from attending their funerals. Donald Locke, Sandra's stepbrother, attributed the family estrangement to Gordon Anderson, Sandra's close friend and subsequent husband. Sandra embarked on various career paths, managing accounts for Tyson Foods and working as a secretary at a real estate office. Residing in Southwater Apartments in Gallatin, a favored commuter town, Sandra's aspirations of becoming an actress blossomed after a nostalgic glance at a snowy picture of herself. In July 1967, she auditioned for a role in a film adaptation of a Carson McCullers novel, competing with actresses from the South and New York. Following a dramatic makeover orchestrated by her fiancé, Gordon Anderson, Sandra secured the role, marking the inception of her acting career, embellished with a fabricated younger age, a deception she upheld throughout her professional and public life. The film wrapped up production in the autumn of 1967. Following the success of The Heart is a lonely hunter, Sandra Locke embarked on numerous cinematic ventures. She graced the screen in Cover Me Babe alongside Robert Forster, the suspect, starring Robert Shaw and the memorable horror film Willard. Transitioning to television, she left an indelible mark on popular shows like Kung Fu and Planet of the Apes, cementing her reputation as a versatile and enduring presence on the small screen. However, it was her relationship with Clint Eastwood that profoundly shaped both her personal and professional trajectory. Their association began with their collaboration on the timeless western The Outlaw Josie Wales in 1976. While their bond deeply influenced her journey, it also marked the culmination of her career. Their romantic involvement became public during the filming of The Gauntlet in 1997, sparking controversy as both were married at the time, Eastwood to Johnson and Locke to Gordon Anderson. Living together, Locke confided in Eastwood about discomfort during intimacy due to her Iud. Upon his insistence, she underwent its removal, though initially hesitant due to concerns about the risks associated with birth control pills. Resorting to tracking her menstrual cycle, Locke encountered challenges leading to two abortions in the late 1970s, the second being particularly agonizing as she believed the child would have been exceptional. Despite never meeting face to face, Maggie Johnson harbored animosity toward Locke, Locke imposed stringent rules limiting Johnson's interactions with their children, even banning her from their premises after a visit. Johnson eventually ended her marriage with Eastwood in late 1978, realizing his commitment to Locke surpassed his previous relationships. Their divorce was finalized in 1984, with Johnson receiving a substantial settlement. In contrast, Locke chose not to divorce her husband, Anderson, a sculptor who lived with his boyfriend in West Hollywood. Locke maintained that their union was practical and lacked intimate involvement, asserting that she and Eastwood shared a mutual commitment that didn't necessitate a legal document. Despite Eastwood's apparent devotion to Locke, evidenced by their collaborations in subsequent films, their relationship deteriorated when Locke opted to remain with Anderson after Eastwood's divorce. Locke expressed a willingness to leave Anderson if Eastwood agreed to couples counseling, which he declined. Ultimately, despite Eastwood's professed love, Locke found herself questioning whether she was truly valued in his eyes. In the early 1980s, biographer McGilligan reveals that Clint Eastwood reverted to his pattern of extramarital affairs. He engaged romantically with story analyst Megan Rose, actress Jamie Rose, animal rights advocate Jane Brolin, and Jacqueline Reeves, a flight attendant he purportedly encountered at his restaurant, The Hog's Breath. During his relationship with Locke, Eastwood fathered two children with Reeves, despite advising her to terminate the pregnancies twice. The affair remained undisclosed until a 1990 Expose article in the Star tabloid, shocking Locke upon its revelation. Over their 14-year relationship, Locke and Eastwood inhabited seven residences, acquiring four including a vacation home in Idaho and the Rising River Ranch near Castle. 
Their relationship came to a bitter end in April 1989, marking a tumultuous legal battle that spanned a decade. Locke initiated legal action suing Eastwood for palimony after he altered the locks of their residence and relocated her belongings to a storage facility without her knowledge while she was engrossed in filming her second directorial project, Impulse. In her complaint, she detailed the distressing eviction from their home, alleging emotional distress and contractual breaches by Eastwood. Locke sought to retain ownership of their properties during the dispute, disclosing in her declaration her two abortions and tubal legation. During the trial, Eastwood initially downplayed the intimacy of their relationship, referring to Locke as a roommate before correcting himself to part-time roommate. Despite public conflicts, Eastwood confided in Bill Brown, expressing Locke as the love of his life. Donald, Locke's half-brother, conveyed Eastwood's enduring affection, but cited Locke's attachment to her husband, Gordon Anderson, as a strain on their relationship. Locke, seeking to protect her possessions from Eastwood's influence, requested Anderson to relinquish his legal claims before Eastwood could distort their marriage truth. With Gordon's trust, Locke gained sole ownership. Amid ongoing legal proceedings, Locke discovered Eastwood's secret family through an investigative journalist, leading to a devastating realization that two children born during their relationship weren't hers. Diagnosed with breast cancer, Locke's resolve weakened, leading to the withdrawal of her lawsuit in November 1990 in exchange for a settlement, including financial compensation and a directing contract with Warner Brothers. However, Locke later alleged fraud in the settlement, claiming Eastwood orchestrated the project development deal to coerce her withdrawal of the palimony lawsuit, stalling her career. After settling out of court, Locke pursued legal action against Warner Brothers, alleging collusion with Eastwood to sabotage her directorial reputation, resolving the lawsuit out of court as well. Following the breakup, Locke's life endured challenges marked by legal battles and health struggles, leaving behind a tumultuous chapter intertwined with fame and heartache. The aftermath of Clint Eastwood and Sandra Locke's breakup revealed divergent paths in their personal lives. Locke, amidst battling breast cancer, underwent a double mastectomy and chemotherapy, where she encountered Scott Cunning, a medical intern tasked with her post-surgery evaluation. Despite a notable age gap and public scrutiny, they embarked on a romantic relationship, publicizing their connection. However, their romance eventually ended fading from the public eye. In contrast, Eastwood's post-breakup life was characterized by a string of relationships and controversies. Following his split from Locke, Eastwood briefly dated Barbara Streisand before engaging in affairs with Marissa Berenson, Carmel Mayer Jean Grace, actress Danny Crane, and model Barbara Minty. He then entered a long-term relationship with Frances Fisher, resulting in the birth of their daughter Francesca. However, their relationship soured amid revelations of Eastwood's undisclosed paternity with Jasmine Reeves. Subsequently, Eastwood embarked on a relationship with Dina Ruiz, leading to marriage despite his ongoing ties to Fisher. Eastwood's personal life continued to draw attention with subsequent relationships, including those with Erica Tomlinson, Fisher, and Christina Sanderai. Throughout, speculation persisted regarding Eastwood's alleged undisclosed children, contributing to the mystery surrounding his private affairs. Meanwhile, Locke's health battles resurfaced, leading to her passing in 2018 at the age of 74. Despite her estranged relationship with Gordon Anderson, he reconciled with her in her final days. In retrospect, the relationship between Eastwood and Locke transcended mere celebrity gossip, unveiling a narrative of passion, secrecy, and heartache. Their complex love story endures as a testament to the enigmatic allure of two iconic Hollywood figures 